all the sounds of the earth are like music. music. All the sounds of the earth are like music, music, music. office and then organization in New York um, and saw through a, a, a variety of performances around the world, um, productions that I think it's fair to say made the world reevaluate the extraordinary power of that collaboration. It's a very interesting question why nobody had 
put together a Rodgers and Hammerstein compilation before Grand Night for Singing. But sort of like everything in the theater, it happened kind of by accident. Um, there was an organization called Rainbow and Stars that did cabaret shows up on the, in the Rainbow Room. Not in the Rainbow Room, but on the way into the Rainbow Room uh, at Rockefeller Center. And they went through the standard sort of, uh, you know, cabaret subject matters, Irving Berlin, Cole Porter. And when they got to Rodgers and Hammerstein, they asked Walter Bobby if he would like to put it together. Walter was an actor, still is an actor, but he wanted to be a director. And Walter dove in to the idea of how do you take the Rodgers and Hammerstein songs that are so well dramatically in, constructed within the shows that they were written for, that to pull them out is tricky. So Walter um, did an extraordinary job of just putting them together in ways that, that you could buy as having something else to say. The best example is a guy who's having trouble with his girlfriend, and he sings, how do you solve a problem like Maria? And the audience, of course, laughs, because it's like, that's not the way they think of the song, but if you listen to the lyrics, that's, it's perfectly valid. And Jason Gross sang it originally, he was funny. Also, no dialogue. It was all well-directed performances that told the audience what the actor was actually going through. So that's how it started. Songs that Rodgers and Hammerstein wrote are not the kind of songs that are being written today. So I think right away, you know, the older generation of folk think, you know, oh, you know, that was, those were the good old days when people wrote lyrics that made sense and music that went along with them. And pop music, you know, in the 60s started to veer away and now it's sort of all over the place. That said, I always think it's valuable to show the power that is within these songs. And one of the best ways to do it is to have people look at them and think, wow, I could reinterpret that song in a way that feels completely contemporary. Because, I mean, if, if, if there's one thing I always wanted to do with my job was help create productions of Rodgers and Hammerstein shows that made people accept them as if they were brand new. Whenever I feel afraid, I hold my head erect and whistle a happy tune so no one will suspect I'm afraid. While shivering in my shoes, I strike a careless pose and whistle a happy tune and no one ever knows I'm afraid. The result of this deception is very strange to tell for when I fool the people I fear I fool myself as well I whistle a happy tune and every single time the happiness in the tune convinces me that I'm not afraid make believe you're brave and the trick will take you far you may be as brave as you make believe you may be as brave as you make believe you Shivering in my shoes, I strike a careless pose. 